In the crisp autumn of 1768, the British and the Iroquois Confederacy met at Fort Stanwix. The fort, nestled in the rugged wilderness of New York, was the stage for a treaty that promised peace but delivered betrayal. The Treaty of Fort Stanwix aimed to draw a clear line. The British wanted to halt the restless push of settlers westward. The Iroquois sought to protect their land and way of life. The British and the Iroquois chief sat across from each other. The air was tense. Promises were made. Maps were drawn. Boundaries were set. The treaty ran through the wild, untouched forests and rolling hills. It was a line meant to keep the peace, but it was drawn with ink that soon faded. The settlers did not stop. They crossed the line, hungry for land and wealth. The promises made at Fort Stanwix crumbled. The Iroquois watched as their land was taken, their way of life shattered. The treaty that was supposed to protect them became a tool of their undoing. This is the story of the Treaty of Fort Stanwix, a tale of broken promises and a line that could not hold. In the intricate history of the 18th century, the period leading up to the Treaty of Fort Stanwix is a complex narrative, emblematic of the broader dynamics between European colonial powers and Native American tribes. To understand the significance of this treaty, one must examine the geopolitical, economic, and social context that shaped its inception. The mid-18th century was a period of intense competition and conflict among European powers, especially the British and the French, who vied for dominance in North America. The struggle reached its zenith during the Seven Years' War, 1756 to 1763, known in the American context as the French and Indian War. The war saw various Native American tribes, including the powerful Iroquois Confederacy, align themselves with one or the other European power driven by strategic interests and the promise of trade goods and territorial protection. The Iroquois Confederacy, a sophisticated political entity comprising six nations, the Mohawk, Oneida, Onondaga, Cayuga, Seneca, and Tuscarora, played a pivotal role in this conflict. Their strategic position in the Northeast and their ability to command vast networks of trade routes made them invaluable allies. Initially, the Iroquois attempted to maintain a position of neutrality, leveraging their influence to extract concessions from both the British and the French. But as the war progressed, they found it increasingly difficult to remain detached, ultimately siding with the British, whom they perceived as the lesser threat to their territorial integrity. The Treaty of Paris in 1763 marked the end of the Seven Years' War, with Britain emerging as the dominant colonial power in North America. The treaty redrew the map of the continent, ceding control of French territories east of the Mississippi to Britain. This monumental shift in power had profound implications for native tribes. The British, now burdened with a vast new empire, faced the daunting task of managing relations with their colonial subjects and the Native Americans who had inhabited the newly acquired lands. One of the British government's immediate concerns was the westward expansion of settlers, which threatened to ignite further conflicts with Native American tribes. In an attempt to stabilize the frontier, the British issued the Royal Proclamation of 1763. This edict sought to curtail colonial expansion beyond the Appalachian Mountains, designating the vast western territories as a quote-unquote Indian reserve. The proclamation aimed to prevent encroachments on Native American lands, thereby reducing the likelihood of violent confrontations. Despite the British government's intentions, the proclamation of 1763 was met with resistance from colonists eager to exploit the fertile lands west of the Appalachians. Settlers, land speculators, and colonial governments all chafed at the restrictions imposed by the proclamation. The tension between colonial ambitions and imperial policy set the stage for a series of negotiations aimed at redefining the boundaries between colonial and native territories. Enter Sir William Johnson, the British Superintendent of Indian Affairs for the Northern Department. Johnson, an astute diplomat and well-versed in native customs, recognized the necessity of engaging directly with the Iroquois Confederacy to address the growing unrest. He convened the Grand Council at Fort Stanwix in 1768, inviting representatives from the Iroquois Confederacy and other tribes affected by the westward push of settlers. The choice of Fort Stanwix as the venue for these negotiations was significant. Located in what is now Rome, New York, the fort was a strategic outpost on the frontier, symbolizing both British military power and a neutral ground for diplomatic discourse. The gathering at Fort Stanwix was one of the largest and most significant diplomatic assemblies between the British and Native Americans in the 18th century, drawing hundreds of Native American delegates and numerous colonial officials. The negotiations were complex and fraught with tension. The Iroquois, represented by their leading sachems, sought to protect their ancestral lands and maintain their sovereignty. They were acutely aware of the pressures exerted by encroaching settlers 
and the need to secure their borders against further incursions. For their part, the British negotiators aimed to appease the colonists' demand for land while honoring the commitments made in the Royal Proclamation of 1763. The resulting Treaty of Fort Stanwix, signed on November 5, 1768, tried to achieve a delicate balance. The treaty delineated a new boundary line extending from Fort Stanwix southward along the Ohio River, ostensibly making a buffer zone between colonial settlements and native territories. The Iroquois ceded significant tracts of land, including much of present-day Kentucky and West Virginia, in exchange for goods and promises of non-interference. But the treaty was deeply flawed. Although it, temporarily, although it temporarily alleviated some immediate tensions, it failed to address the underlying issues driving the westward expansion. The new boundary line, much like the earlier proclamation line, proved porous and difficult to enforce. Settlers continued to push westward, disregarding the terms of the treaty and further encroaching on Native American lands. The Iroquois Confederacy, despite their diplomatic efforts, found themselves increasingly marginalized. The land sessions at Fort Stanwix weakened their territorial base and undermined their political influence. The promises of protection and respect for their sovereignty, much like the ink on the treaty itself, faded with time. The, fort, the Treaty of Fort Stanwix stands as a testament to the complex and often tragic interplay of diplom diplomacy, power, and territorial ambition in 18th century North America. It highlights the persistent struggle of native tribes to defend their land and way of life against the relentless tide of colonial expansion. The aftermath of the Treaty of Fort Stanwix was marked by a mixture of intermediate and long-term consequences that shaped the landscape of Native American and colonial relations. Initially, the treaty appeared to offer a temporary respite from the escalating tensions. The Iroquois Confederacy received a substantial amount of goods and compensation for the lands ceded, which momentarily placated some of their leaders. However, the deeper issues underlying the treaty quickly became evident. The boundary line established by the treaty proved to be ineffective in curbing the westward expansion of settlers, who continued to encroach upon native territories with little regard for the agreed-upon borders. For the Iroquois and the other native tribes affected by the treaty, the immediate aftermath saw an erosion of their territorial integrity and sovereignty. The land sessions at Fort Stanwix significantly reduced the Iroquois' control over their ancestral lands, particularly in the Ohio Valley. This loss of territory not only weakened their economic base, but also diminished their strategic leverage in dealing with both British authorities and encroaching settlers. As a result, the Iroquois found it increasingly challenging to maintain their traditional way of life and protect their communities from external pressures. On the colonial side, the Treaty of Fort Stanwix failed to resolve the underlying tensions between settlers and Native Americans. The insatiable demand for land among colonial settlers continued to drive westward expansion, often in direct violation of the treaty's provisions. This persistent encroachment led to renewed conflicts and violence on the frontier. The inability of British authorities to enforce the treaty's boundaries further undermined their credibility and control over the region, contributing to a growing sense of lawlessness and instability in the newly defined territories. In the broader context of North American geopolitics, the treaty's failure to establish a lasting peace set the stage for future conflicts. The Revolutionary War, which broke out less than a decade after the signing of the Treaty of Fort Stanwix, saw many native tribes, including some factions of the Iroquois Confederacy, aligning with the British in hopes of stemming the tide of American settler expansion. However, the war's outcome only accelerated the dispossession of native lands. The Treaty of Fort Stanwix is a reminder of the fleeting nature of diplomatic agreements in the face of relentless colonial ambitions and the profound and lasting impact of these treaties on the lives and futures of Native peoples. Thank you for listening.